What's going on, my PT peeps? I'm One Eye Bry, also known as PT. You don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely going to be talking about the show Silo on Apple TV+. Plus. Spoiler warning for all things Silo. Well, mainly the first episode because that's the only episode I've seen so far. But have you seen Silo yet? It's a pretty good show. So I've seen the first episode and part of the second. It's yet another show on a streaming service. And right now it's got me very interested in seeing what happens. But Silo is the name. It's on Apple TV+. Plus. It looks to be a book series. If you watch the opening, it's uh, based on the book series Silo by Hugh Howey. And you follow Sheriff Holston. He is married to Allison and you follow him from the beginning and you're trying to figure out what's going on here he's doing stuff in his apartment and everybody lives in a silo underground i'm guessing it's a missile silo and it's like 120 levels or something i could be wrong but it seems to be this huge thing underground he's fixing one of the grates and he's just tidying up his apartment but as he's walking through the silo you get to see it and it's probably a set and CGI and green screen in this, but it reminds me a lot of the Matrix when they're underground in Zion. But you get to see they have cows and crops, and I don't know how many people live in the silo, but they've been there for over 140 years. There was some sort of rebellion and the rebels that destroyed books and servers and you know hard drives and everything. But the silo is a huge place underground that's been here for 140 plus years. And I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm getting stuff wrong. I'm not trying to say stuff wrong, but it's a good series so far. Again, I'm only one episode in and I thought this was like a window, but it's a camera that's looking out towards the world that's you know outside that's supposed to be poisonous and terrible. But Sheriff Holston goes into the sheriff's office he writes double the flowers in front of the mirror like a note because evidently he's going to go outside. And if you say, I want to go out or I want to go outside, you leave the silo. He puts his badge on his desk with a note. It's like a goodbye note because he's trying to leave this place. And his friend, co-worker, Deputy Marnes, played by Will Patton, love this guy. He uh, is like, what are you doing here? And he's like, ah, I'm up early, you know, couldn't sleep and couldn't do this, you know. And so I don't think Sheriff Holston was, you know, ready for that. But he goes into holding three, locks himself in the cell, and he looks out. Again, I thought it was a window, but it's a camera feed. And he's pointing to someone there. Turns out to be his wife that's in a suit. You find out later that she wants to go out. That's later on in the episode. It jumps around a little bit, but nothing where it's like, wow, this is terrible. It works well. But Deputy Marnes comes in to Holding 3 or Holdings 3, and he's like, what are you doing? And Sheriff Holston's like, I'm going to go see my wife. I should have done this years ago. So there's a couple time jumps in the first episode. There's like two years after stuff happens, and, you know, we get to see what it makes sense. It's not like it. we get lost in the story. Sometimes it jumps around too much shows or movies, but it works. I like this guy. I like the casting. I like the story. I like the idea of we don't know the information yet, and the people that are running the silo are definitely hiding stuff. You know, we don't know what the true story is, what happened here with the rebellion and the silo and who made it, and we get to see a glimpse of his wife, Allison, who is getting ready to go out, but later on in the episode, we see her go out, and then it kind of goes back some time. So you see Allison and Sheriff Holston, and they're you know getting ready for a message on the computer, and the message tells them that they're allowed to have a baby. So I guess in this silo, the powers that be, the people in charge, judicial, or whatever they're calling it, I love these mugs, mine and also mine. And there's nice little things here that show that people have made this silo their home. And I buy into the story right away, which is always good. I have to comment about Allison wearing red, which foreshadowing for sure. Uh, but she runs to the computer and I guess they were getting a message at like eight o'clock. And this is the third time that they're gonna try to have a baby. They're allowed to have a baby, so they have to go to the doctor to have Allison's birth control removed, which turns out it's not actually removed by the doctor. So a lot of shady stuff is going on here. But like I said, Allison and 
her husband, look on the computer for the message and they get the message here that they're allowed reproductive clearance granted. They have 365 days to have a child and it's a countdown. So Allison's like, yep, let's go. Let's get to work. Time is of the essence, right? And they talk about, you know, what the good things to have from this and the good news and it's going to be great. But you see a countdown throughout the episode of 364 days, 24 hours and 59 minutes. So a minute went by. They end up not being able to have a child. But again, this place is pretty shady and it builds for the story. We see all this food, stuff looks good. And everybody knows that they're going to have a child. They're allowed to have a child or they can try to have a child, I should say. The workers, the other people that live there, it's like it just came out minutes ago. How does everybody know? Like, it's kind of like, wow, this is a little weird that everybody knows a lot of different stuff, what's going on here, which makes you go, hmm. So as Allison and her husband sit down at the table, this lady comes over and talks about, you know, she's a reproductive person and she can do this if you want to meet with me you know, I think I can help you. So Allison goes to the doctor and the doctor says, can you feel this? Are you numb? Are you this? Oh, I can't really feel anything. I feel the pressure. And so the doctor is doing his thing down there. We don't see what he's actually doing and neither does Allison or her husband. He says, I got the birth control, which looks pretty terrible by the way. And then he plops it down there. So we don't even know if it's true or not what he was doing. Turns out it wasn't. So we see this lady, her Allison's coworker, talking about, you know, a friend of theirs having a baby. Tim Robbins plays Bernard. He's not in it much the first episode, but he just it's like, you can't post an article without me allowing it. And Allison posts an article about recovering files because she works for IT, which is a big part of the story. We see the lady is, I don't know, the mayor, I believe. She kind of runs things here and she's worried about Freedom Day is what we're here for the day of celebration. She's worried about people causing problems and the sheriffs and the deputies are going to uh, take care of it and it should be okay. So as Allison meets with this lady, I believe it's Martha, I could be wrong, but she has a lot to say about the article that she wrote and she doesn't really believe everything's true what they're telling everybody here. So Allison leaves after hearing that information, you know, it's interesting about, you know, don't you worry about this and wonder about this and the, everything they're setting up for Freedom Day. She has to go meet this George guy that put a ticket in for IT. You get to see the different levels, like 60 and this, as she's walking down the spiral stairs, which would be a lot of walking, that's for sure. But as she stops and you get to see, you know, the porters and the stuff running around and this is how stuff is transported through the silo and it's a good world building. She sits and she sees a uh, play where they're talking about the rebellion and the founders stepped up and they did this and the people were coming here and the, the people prevented people from opening the door and letting the poison in. It's just interesting that they're building a play and showing that as this is what happened and you're just supposed to take it for granted because there's no record of what actually happened before the rebellion. You see people pay with credits. There's a band playing and people are donating there too. And this is what they use for currency inside the silo, which is interesting. It builds the world. You see uh, Sheriff Holston is at level two. You see this little kid come sliding down. So they put a slide down for the kids to have fun during Freedom Day. And it's just an interesting way of you know, building this silo world for the show we're watching. So Allison walks to go meet this George guy and he sees 17 there computer repair and George is putting in a ticket that he needs help and he was hoping to get Allison time and time again but he didn't want to be suspicious so he didn't ask for her so Allison finally shows up here during Freedom Day and this is where the stuff really gets interesting because George has a drive a hard drive that someone gave him and I got a note about all the red here. He actually dies in the episode as well. So it's interesting if the red connection is still here or not, but I see it meaning stuff and shows and I can't look past it now. You know, once you know, you know, and we'll see how it plays out in the rest of the series. But George talks about a bunch of things and the article that Allison put up, he printed and about recovering files. He thought about this drive that he got from some person. It's an old hard drive. And George tried to access the stuff on there, but he didn't know how to do it. So Allison is going to help him. So they connect the hard drive and there's stuff on there. Well, at first they don't know how to do it. So Allison has to be smart and really get the ball rolling here. 
and she looks at the drive and maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And it's basically encoded where you can't just open it. So as Freedom Day celebration is going on, you get to see all these people that are really just brainwashed, that are just listening to the mayor and whatever she says, they're like, yeah, they're celebrating like sheep. But she goes at six o'clock and there's a specific time where stuff happened and they took their freedom back. Allison is trying to figure out the names that she could use to access the drive. And it's pretty smart what she does. She looks at it, she looks at the drive. There's a number 18 on it, which I'm guessing something will come from that later on. And they're working on things and they've been working on this for a while. There's food and everything. And they're trying to just get answers. Allison is going to give up and, you know, like, all right, enough of this. But she doesn't. So she's like, let me look at the drive. So she looks at the drive, she flips it over. And on the back of it, there's some numbers or something that she's going to use to actually access the drive. And she, you know, gets access to it. So this is kind of the start of everything of the story that she finds information that once you know information, you can't put the cat back in the bag. There's no going back. So you see it here. I don't know if that's a serial number or what. And then it says library. So she types that in George's computer and it works. So searching, you know, the directory library and it opens things up, which is kind of cool. If you just look at all the different stuff here and you see the device name 18, the items just populate a bunch of different items. And um, it's like 200, 300. I don't know how many files or items are on it. And you get to see all the different files here. So as they access it, they get to see the silo blueprint and you see October 12th. Silo year 98 is what I'm guessing it says there, 96. You see the blueprint for the silo. So they're accessing a bunch of information that George is going to access at some point and get in trouble and we'll see what happens there. But levels one through 20, loading upper levels. And again, I don't know how many levels there actually are in this silo and at least not in the first episode but he sees because he's going through some items on the drive which you would allison leaves and is like look you should get rid of that thing do that she goes to celebrate freedom day and they're blowing horns and partying and having a good time george you know can't stop looking at the drive like we all would like if there's answers in front of you we got to find them out he sees classified information here like a tunnel section eight and so more on that later for sure. But Allison leaves her apartment with her husband and they're just trying to figure out answers. You know, so she goes to talk to Martha, I believe her name is, because she's curious and she wants answers, right? You know, I would too. So she asks, why wouldn't they want me to have kids? She's not the type of person they would want to have kids because she wants answers. She's going to go against things. So she talks with that lady and she goes back to talk to her husband. And it's just not like, she doesn't spill the beans yet. So they have to go to the doctor because they're running out of time to have the child. So it was like a year. They don't, she doesn't go to the meeting with the doctor. She goes to meet George and to talk with George and she's there for hours and they, you know, check the drive and nothing and nothing, nothing of significance. But she's like, let's do one more. Come on. You know, like, all right, let's check it out. And of course she picks one more file that gives her more answers. She points to it here and it's the cleaning record video of outside so she points to it right there but you can see jane carmody carmody cleaning year 97 september 13 silo year 97 and you see on her glasses that it's nice outside the birds are flying around and it's nice out you know her husband goes to where she works and it's like did we see allison she's not at work so he goes home and allison is like i have answers i want to talk to you she has the water running to you know cover up the sound she cuts out her birth control the doctor was supposed to have the birth control out but she cut it out herself so what's going on here they lied to her so she never had a chance to get pregnant I'm like oh man they're hiding stuff right it just builds the case they're hiding stuff her husband runs out to get help and she's sitting there bleeding she goes out to the cafeteria area and she puts on a display and talks about what she found out and tells you know everything to everybody here. Her husband comes and is like, hey, you know, it's okay. No, it's this. She's like, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Don't tell me I'm crazy. I know stuff. I can't do this. And then she comes to the conclusion that she wants to go outside. She wants to leave. She wants to have answers. So that's basically the big thing that she doesn't tell everybody, at least us, what she said 
we don't hear all the stuff she said. She just is spilling the beans to everybody there. And she comes to the conclusion that she wants to go out. And that's basically a death sentence because she's going to go outside. George is arrested because she was there working with him. He says that she was there and she never came back. They go to check his apartment place and they don't find the drive. I'm guessing because the drive is hinted at in this hidden spot here. I guess this is a TV or a monitor or what that is, but they don't open that. At least we don't see, so I think the drive is safe. We see the suit that Allison is gonna wear to leave to go outside. It's nice steam cleaned and they're connecting it and make sure it's okay. Not sure what this is, if it's the belongings or what, but I'm not, I didn't get what that was, but they show that. And Allison is locked up in holding three. And that's where he goes. It's probably with the set that it is that they use for the show, but they talk and she says, look, I'm gonna go out there. If it's nice and green and plush, I'm going to clean. If not, I'm gonna say, I'm sorry. She puts on, or before she puts on the helmet, last words. I love you. It's sad because she's basically leaving and he knows that. And he, is he going to see her again? I don't know. But she says, I love you. She says a little spiel like, not today. And I, the little spiel that they say among it. And he cries and says, I love you too. She's connected with the hose and everything to her helmet. And then she's going to walk and go outside. And we're kind of wondering if she's going to survive. What's really out there? Because we don't know. We see outside and it looks terrible. It looks dirty and dusty and just not a good environment outside. But everybody watches because it's a big deal. We're like, oh man, she's going out there to clean. She's going out there to, uh, you know, maybe survive. So she goes to the camera and she cleans it. So she said before, if it's plush and nice, I'm going to clean. And she cleans it. So it looks nice out there. But around her, it doesn't look plush and nice. It looks gross and cracked and dry and just not a good environment. So what is actually out there? We don't really know just yet. Hopefully it's answered. I would assume it is. Again, I've only seen the first episode and part of the second. We get to see a little bit out there in the second episode, but that's a whole other video. But she looks at the camera and then she decides to walk away. So she cleans the camera and she's going to walk over the hill, but she collapses. She gets up, stumbles more, and then collapses right there. Her husband looks on, everybody looks on, and it's sad because we're like, oh man, I thought she was gonna get out of here. I thought she was gonna be safe. I could see it where she gets out, she walks, and walks over the hill, and maybe there's a civilization out there, but no, she collapses right there, and everybody looks on, and it's very sad, and we're like, oh man, that kind of sucked, right? I thought it was gonna be a bigger thing here. He looks on what to do, not sure, but life goes on. So George is still alive. So I'm guessing that George is like, I got to get answers. I got to keep working on this. I fell through with Allison, but it's his job now to figure out answers. Two years later, we find out that Sheriff Holston is living by himself. It's got to suck to be here all alone in this place. I'm guessing you have to have like vitamins added to the food because if you don't go out and get sunlight, you have a vitamin D deficiency, which is not good. But Deputy Marnes comes in and talks to Sheriff Holston about a case that this guy, George, is dead. So they're not sure why. Was it a suicide? Was it an accident? But that's the guy that was working with Allison on the drive. We see that George died. But the big question is, how did he die? Why did he die? Was he killed? Was it a suicide? Was it this? Was it that? So they check on the body and they see that he's definitely dead. They talk to another deputy and the deputy says that there's this woman, Juliet, that says that she thinks that he was killed. Deputy Marin says, it took me a day or it took us a day to walk here. It takes you a day to get to all these places? That's crazy. Is that legit? So they walk down the spot here to go talk to Juliet and Juliet is probably a big character for the show. She is working on the generator here that's basically keeping everyone alive, generating the power that's necessary here. And I understand the fact that she's a strong woman and what they're showing on here, but it's kind of crazy. They ask, what's her name? Juliet. Juliet Nichols is her name. And she's got a huge wrench and she secures this bolt or screw on there. And it reminds me a lot of Armageddon with Bear, and I love that movie. So it just reminded me of that. But she fixes it, and she's like, all right. She, she uh, motions to her people that you can close it. And so she is a very important person here to keep this place running, having power, 
the generator working effectively because that's pretty important. And if they've been down here for 140 years or something ridiculous, there's going to be wear and tear. Are they going to have parts? How do they keep this thing running? But they talk with Juliet and then it jumps two years to present day here that Sheriff Holston talks to Deputy Martins and is like, I have to go out there. I have to find my wife. I have to see my wife. You know, it hasn't been the same since you talked to Juliet two years ago. Well, he's like, well, I'm going to get answers. I'm going to find my wife. I'm going to see my wife. And I'm finally listening. And that's the first episode of Silo. It's very interesting, very entertaining. It gets you interested and hooked to see what's going down here. But let me know your thoughts. Post your comments below. Stay safe. And as always, tell them, Daryl. Yeah, we love you.